going to record. And um, so you should be looking at my screen. Am I sharing my screen? You see a grid uh, with Manuel in the upper left. I'm looking for, okay. Yeah, I'm Thank you, Priscilla. I saw her nod. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to assume everyone can see Manuel. Okay. Manuel, if you can bring your object into the frame from your left, let's see, from your okay. right, and, and then out of your screen to your left. And then I pass, I, it, on to pass, pass it on to the, I have to pass it to the next person. Yeah. You're passing it to me. Do you see me next to you? Yeah, I, I see you actually, yes, you're next. So I, I don't have to say anything. I just pass the object and that's it. Right, you don't have to say anything. You just pass the object. So you okay. bring it in, you bring it in from one side of your screen and and then pass it to the other side. Okay, this is for, this is for you, Robert. Oh, that's great. So bring it in from the left. That's good. Bring it in from the left. And now bring it in and pass it to me and I'll grab it from you. Okay, I'm ready oh, to I grab it. it. Okay, you have to grab it here. Okay. Yeah, I have to grab it. Okay, pass it to me over to your left. Okay, I thank you. Oh, it turned into an hourglass. Okay, okay. Jaime, are you ready? You ready, okay. Jaime? I'm passing it to you. Are you ready? Here it goes. Yes, the other okay. side. The other side, the other side. I'm like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, it is. It's yeah. backwards. Okay, you ready? Here it goes. It's yeah. it's halfway into your frame now. Awesome. Halfway into your frame. Are you looking? Yeah. Okay. There you go. I passed it to you. The timing is everything, honey. Okay. Okay. Here okay. it comes again. Oh, you did it. Okay. Yeah. Now you're passing it. Is it lagging? So how's one? How's one? You got it? You got something? Yeah, I got something. Yeah. Okay. So David, get one. ready. David, are you ready? Other side, David. Yeah, I'm ready. Wait, okay, Jaime, you gotta do it again. Watch one wasn't ready. Okay, how's one? You got it? Oh, <laughs> you got to bring it in from one side yeah okay and you got to show it to us uh, so it should be in your frame by now Hoshwan. okay and show us what it is the sound oh, yeah is not, okay so I mean, david are you ready coordinated with the with the view the image and the sound are different timing david you ready david you ready yeah i'm ready other side david it's lagging other side yeah. david you got to look at my screen. Yeah. Uh, okay. See. Okay. Now, David, now this is the hard one. You have to pass it down to Joseph. Joseph, you got to grab it from above. <laughs> from the ceiling. Okay. Yeah. Pass it down, David. Joseph's ready. Okay. You passed it. Okay. Now pass it off to your right over to, to Salvatore. Salvatore. Yeah. Salvatore, you got it? He passed okay. it already. Bring okay. it in. Bring it in. Okay. Jonah. Okay, she did it. Do, do, are you ready? Do, it's you. Other side. Okay. And you got to show us what it is. And now everybody else should be rehearsing. Joshua's ready. Do, yeah. pass it off to Joshua, the other side. Yeah. Okay, Joshua's got it. Grab it, Joshua. Okay, now you're gonna pass it down. Don't spill it, Priscilla. He's passing you the orange juice. You gotta pass it down, Priscilla's. Got Is that it. an orange juice? Okay, okay. Oh, okay. Priscilla, it was awfully big and fast. Okay, now pass it off to Lily. Lily's ready. Lily, Lily is poisoning ready. Other side, Priscilla. Are you guys seeing my screen? Lily, there it goes. Okay, beautiful. Chiara, is that Chiara or Clara? Chiara. Oh, beautiful. 
You guys are getting it. Richard, don't blow it. Don't drop the teddy bear. Brenna, are you ready? Here it comes, Brenna. Richard's about to pass it to you. You got to show us what it is, Richard. Oh, it's a tape measure. Okay. Brenna's got it, and it's got to go down. Klamar, Klamar, you got to get it from above. Okay. Uh, Brenna, did you pass it to Klamar? Okay. She's got it. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Now, Emily, Emily's ready. Pass it over to Emily. And this is gonna, this is rehearsal. We're gonna do this fast. Oh, that's beautiful. Don't drop okay. that, that's fragile. Ryan's, okay. Ryan's ready. Emily passed it, Ryan. Did you see it? Okay, beautiful. Isabel got it and it's going across to Joe. Joe's got it and Joe's passing it down to Ludney, okay. Ludney's got it, bring it in Ludney, and now pass it over to Logan, other way. Yes, Logan, you're ready. Logan's ready, Logan. Oh, yes, Logan. Sam's taking it from Logan. I don't see it, Sam. Okay, Sam's gonna pass it to Gina. What is Gina's, that? What is the object? Oh, Gina's got a bowl. Don't yeah. spill yeah. it. Oh, Gina, okay. It's okay, okay this is the hard one. Guanglin, you've got to pass it across. Okay, you ready? I don't even know who's next. So whoever's on the next screen is going to have to move fast. Okay, ready and pass it over. Molly, Molly's the one. Molly did it. She did it. Okay. Catrell to Alex to Patrick. You guys are getting it now. Okay, Patrick has to go down to Brandon. Down. Down to Brandon. Brandon's ready to receive it. And over. I didn't see it, Brandon. You got to see it. Ah, okay. And over. To Rafe, Rafe, did you get it from Brandon? Other side, <laughs> yes. What is the other Brandon. side? Oh, okay, the other side. Brandon and Rafe, you guys got to try that again. What is the other side? I don't see that. Uh, are you? Am I sharing my screen successfully? Yes, you are. You guys yes. can see my screen. I need someone to nod. Who's going to nod? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Guangdong. Okay, Ray's passing it to Chiao Shun, who's passing it to Denalia, who's passing it to Braden. Oh, yes. Oh, Braden. Other way, Braden. <laughs> Other side. Other side. Where is, where is uh, the album? To your left, I think. From your left and then down to Alexander. Yeah, from your left. Take it from your left, Braden, and bring it in, and now pass it down to Alexander. Down to Alexander. Alexander's got it. Uh, what is it? Okay, tissues. Jinning. Oh, this other side, Alexander. Jinning is, is receiving it. From the other side, from your, from your right, and passing it to your left. To Shay, from your from your right to your left. Shay's got it. Passing it to Brendan. From your right to your left, Brendan. I didn't see what that was, Brendan. Oh, okay. What is it? What is it? Okay, Brendan. I see. Passing it to Tony. And Tony. Oh, we got to somehow, okay, Tony, throw it over to Carvins. Just throw it off to your, no, the other way. Carvins, catch it. <laughs> catch it. Oh, he caught it. My camera, my camera is not working. Okay, <laughs> you threw it just in time, Tony. Carvins caught it and we are done. All right, you guys ready to do it again, but this time for real?
We're going to do it fast. That was rehearsal. Okay. Any questions? Tony, you're now at the end of the line. If your camera's on when we get there, Carvin's is going to throw you something. You have to catch it. You're catching it from your left. Okay, Carvin's, you are throwing it to your right. Oh, you switched again. Okay, we'll see. Whoever ends up at the end might have to catch something thrown to them, okay? Okay, you guys ready? All right. I'm yes. switching back. Manuel, are you poised and ready? I am, and if you want to I change have, yes. the object, you can. No, I, I, I want to give you the same object. Okay, you're coming okay. from your right and passing it to your left, Manuel. No, it's, it's kind of slow. It's not coordinated. Okay. Here's the flag. So, okay. I'm ready to receive captured. it, Manuel. Ready and okay. okay. Go. As you pass it, I'll grab it, but it has to pass out to your left. Okay, thank you. Here it comes, Simon. Okay. You ready? Sorry. You got to take it out. I don't want to drop it, Jaime. There you Am I still sharing my screen? You see it, right? You see me trying to pass it to you? Uh, take it. Okay, she took it. Beautiful. A new object. David got it. Beautiful, David. Good pass out. Joseph, are you ready? Joseph. Okay. Mm. Okay, now Salvatore, off over to Salvatore. Okay. Other was other side, Jonah. Other side. <laughs> okay, yes. Do got it beautifully done, Do. Very nice. Joshua, you ready to get it from Do? Yes. Okay, she passed it, Joshua. There you go. Now down. Down to Priscilla. Priscilla's got it. It's right up too close to the screen. Lily's ready. She's grabbing it from Priscilla. Okay, over to Kiara. To Richard. And the timing is everything. Richard to Brenna. Brenna's ready, ready. And down. Yes, timing's everything. We need a steady flow. I love that little, whatever that is. Emily's got it. And passing it to Ryan. Ryan's got it. Beautiful. To Isabel. To Joe. Oh, yes. Well done, Joe. Down. To Ludney. Ludney, we don't see it. Oh, yes. Okay. Over to Logan. Logan's ready. Oh, yes. Well done, Logan. Sam. Let's try to get work on our smooth transitions. To Gina. Well done. Nice pass. To Jeng. And Jeng, now you got to throw it. Whatever you get, Jeng. Jeng, what did you get? Okay. Hockey, you got to toss that across. Okay, you ready to toss it? Someone's going to catch it on the next screen. Ready? Throw it. One, two, go. Gina, you catch the Pocky. Okay, don't spill it. Jeng's back. Do it again, Jeng. From the other side. Okay, it's back to being Pocky. Molly's ready. Molly's got it. Going to Catriel. Yes. To Alex. Mm. Alex has got it. Down to Rafe. What is it? Go to the other side, Rafe. 
Oh, it changed. What happened to my screen? Okay, now you got to go to the to the left. Yeah, Brandon, you ready? Yes, to Alex. Alexander, got it. Okay, you got it, Alexander. Bring it in, and over to Jining. Jining, you got it. To Charles. Charles, it's spilled everywhere. It's it's all over the floor now. Pick it up. <laughs> Charles isn't looking at his shared screen, is he? Okay, who's this Charles, buddy? Someone got to take care of Charles. Pick it up. There you go. Pass it over to Tony. Over to your left. Tony's got it. And now that's it. Okay. okay. Braden, what about you? Okay, Tony, throw it to Braden. Over to your right. Braden, are you ready to catch it? Okay, go ahead, Tony, throw it. Braden, catch it from your left. It's coming in. It's a long way. You got it. Okay, beautifully done. Thank you, everybody. Was, Enough of this, right? That was nice. That was nice. <clears throat> you can do this. Hooray. Okay. So, uh, one of the reasons we do this is to reinforce the fact that we are in this together. Um, without, uh, without the camera, it's hard to engage. Um, I know some of you have two devices, um, but we, we miss you. We, we miss you, Oz. We miss you, Shay. We miss you, Zahra. We miss you, Luis, Sophia, Carrington. Um, we miss you guys, okay? So if there's anything you can do to get a camera working, or to resolve anything, any um, barrier you're facing, um, please. Uh, and if there's anything we can do to help, let us know. Uh, if you want me to ask DTS to send you a camera, then um, just let me know. Um, you, you paid a lot for this course. To get the most out of it, you need to be on camera. <clears throat> Um, because um, this course is an interactive course. This is not one of those courses where you disappear into the background. Um, everybody's on the front, in the front row uh, during the pandemic um, on Zoom. You are all in the front row of class. There is no back row, okay? Okay, Manuel. Well, <laughs> yes, it's, this is a very interesting beginning also because it allows, allows us to see the faces and, and to remember what you have done before. Uh, the interesting thing is the cross-vertical relations that we all faculty have with, uh, within this. So I have, had, I have reviewed the studios from, uh, from your earlier semesters with, uh, for example, with Ignacio. Also, I think I saw some of the courses that you had with Robert before. So that looking at your faces and remembering your projects is something interesting. And we hope that you continue with the great work you have been doing before. OK. So um, I want to, we're going to show some slides, um, which is something we will do on Fridays, usually. Um, and uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show a few slides. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, let's put them in the chat. And um, actually, I want to make it an assignment. I want um, everyone at some point uh, in, this, uh, in this slideshow to write a question. Uh, I want to ask you all to, to come up with 
Uh, picture yourself uh, in April. That's uh, a mere three months from now. Picture yourself three months from now. What do you want to get out of this course? What do you expect? And uh, since you're, you're, um, you're used to being disappointed uh, in your courses is my guess. What if you weren't disappointed by this course? What, uh, if you could get anything out of this course, what would you want to get out of this course? And these questions are not hypothetical, they're not rhetorical. Um, we're giving you this syllabus in Brightspace. It's like a contractual agreement. This is what you are agreeing to do. And it's also what we are agreeing to present. Um, but what, where's your part in this? Where's your agency? Where's your power? Where is your authority as a student? Uh, what do you want out of this course? What do you require out of this course? Um, someone's paying a lot of money for this course. Some of you will be in debt for decades to come. You, uh, the question is, is this course worth your while? It's not a passive question. It's really a question of how do we make this course worth your while? And that is something that Manuel and I take very seriously. And out of respect for you, your time, the money it takes for you, uh, to, the privilege of going to college, uh, we wanna make sure that we are seizing every opportunity to do what we can to make this course worth your while. So any questions about the question we're asking you to uh, ask us? So it's clear. So every single one of you should write a question in the chat, shared with everyone. And if someone else asks your question um, that you were thinking of, then ask it in a more specific way or ask it a harder question, you know, raise the stakes, challenge us. Uh, we wanna be challenged. We wanna make this course relevant to you. Um, Anything you want to add there, Manuel? No, I think it's a good point that uh, the emphasis in the writing and uh, I like I like to see I would like to see the the reading and read them all all the questions together and see what what do you have uh, what are you asking for exactly. So I'm looking yeah. forward I'm looking forward for the for reading that piece. Okay. So um, you're gonna recognize some of these slides um, because this course builds on your History Theory 1 and History Theory 2 courses. That's not a coincidence. It's actually very deliberate. And so I'm gonna start by saying something that I uh, try to say at the beginning of every class I teach. Welcome to insert the name of the course here, whatever the name of the course is. Um, uh, my name is Robert Cowherd. I am number four. And because Manuel and I are together, Manuel, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna say, Manuel and I are number four. So what does that mean? On a good day, Manuel and I are the fourth most important source of understanding. Because we give lectures, it might be confusing. You might be confused into believing that we are the number one source of understanding. But we are saying this at the beginning to make sure that you are clear, that we are all clear. The teachers are not the most important source of understanding. On a good day, we are number four. The number one source of understanding is the world itself. You are the world's foremost experts of your own life experience. Uh, when Manuel and I went to school, uh, the first thing they did, especially in architecture school, 
is they stripped us down to zero. They made it clear that we were nothing and we were nobody. And then they built us up one drawing exercise after another. They built us into architects. And in order to build us into architects, they had to eliminate us as human beings. And it was very traumatic and it was not anything I would wish on my worst enemy. So we're doing the opposite of that. We are not stripping you down to zero. We are requiring you to bring your expertise of your lifetime experience. And you need to bring your personal life experience to class every day. That is a requirement of the course. Uh, you need to bring your expertise. Don't let go of it. Uh, so number two, if the world is the most important teacher in the world, why go to school at all? It's an excellent question. And I hope you've asked yourself seriously that question, why would I go to school? It's so time consuming. These are the best years of my life. It's so expensive. I'll be paying off these debts for decades, right? There are a lot of reasons not to go to school. And I, as someone who dropped out of college myself, I strongly recommend it. If you have better alternatives, don't tell anyone I told you that. Um, but there are good reasons to go to school. Number two, the second most important uh, source of understanding is, and I should be sharing my screen, shouldn't I? Okay. It's having trouble. Okay. Am I sharing my screen now? Okay. So number one is the world. Number two is architecture itself reveals uh, things about the world that uh, we would otherwise not know. When architects look at the world, we have an understanding that is not accessible to other people. Your parents, unless they're architects or designers, they don't see, they don't understand, they don't have access to understanding the world the way you do. Okay, so this is part of the superpowers that you are gaining as architects. Architecture is the second most important source of understanding because it gives us a special relationship to the world. The third most important source of understanding are your colleagues. Your colleagues understand you, they understand what you're going through, they understand your education, your situation, they see the world the way you see the world in a lot of ways, and they can help. And um, so just as we expect you to lean on your colleagues to develop your understanding, we expect you to be there when your colleagues need you. Friends don't let friends get it wrong. So we're counting on you to reach out, and we're counting on you to be there when someone reaches out to you. So uh, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to set up a WhatsApp chat group. Um, if someone knows how to do that, please do that. Um, thank you. Uh, is that Klaumar volunteer? Yes, Klaumar or Klau. I can do it. I just need everyone's numbers. OK. So yeah. how should they give you uh, their numbers? Do you want to set up a WhatsApp chat and put a link in the chat? Um, it's it's through an app, so maybe I can put my number on the chat and they can like um, message me their numbers. Okay, can... thank you so much, Kalamar. Kalamar is the uh, the WhatsApp czar, and she is the one who will help give us all access to each other, so we can do number three. And then on a good day, uh, when we're around, Manuel and I will help out as best we can. We are number four. We're not that important, but um, we're here for you. Um, you, should, you should believe what we're telling you because we're old. We've been around. We've seen a lot. We understand things. It took a lot for us to... Uh, 
to get to where we are, to be in front of you presenting this course. Um, and so you should trust us within limits. Everything we say to you uh, is our best shot, but it's subject to verification. You, uh, on the big important things, you should uh, maybe look into it and check to make sure what we're telling you is correct. And um, there's a good chance there will be an element of truth to what we tell you, but it's not the complete truth and it's not completely correct. So your generation, uh, kind of the ball's in your court to kind of do a better job than we did. I mean, just look at the world. Uh, in a way, um, in a way, when you face someone as old as we are, uh, what you should do is turn around and not walk, but run in the other direction. Because look at the world. We are the ones who are responsible for the mess that you are inheriting. Sorry about that. We feel bad. Manuel and I feel bad. And so we are here to share with you whatever we can to help you face these challenges. But you should understand that we got it horribly wrong, tragically wrong. And so the world is collapsing around us and uh, it's gonna fall to you to pick up the pieces. And um, uh, sorry about that. Um, so this course is being taught in that context. And it's very difficult context within which to teach because you pretty much uh, can't trust what our generation did with the world. Uh, and so um, it's an awkward position that we're in, but we're going to do our best. Um, so that's that part of my presentation. What do you have to say of, to all this, Manuel? Am I going too far? No, I, I think you're, good, you're in a good speed. I, I, I think, is it, you think it's a moment now that we can talk about Today, what is happening today? Not yet. You... I've got I've got one more thing to set the stage for today. Okay, okay, okay. Please. Should because I do the... that? Yeah, please continue. I just was confused. I, I I thought you were. This was the moment, but perfect. Okay, perfect. I'll I'll give you. I'll 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 wave my flag. I don't have my flag. Well, um, <laughs> I'll give you. Um, one. And I see people are hesitating. They're not asking their questions yet. Okay. And I think that's good. I think that's good. Start thinking about the question you want to ask. Um, and the moment will arise pretty soon because I, I'm not sure that the message is getting through that this class is going to be different. So to make sure that we're clear on how this class is different, I'm going to give you an example of how this class is different. So when Manuel and I took this course, Manuel, did you did you take Julian Beinart's course at yes. MIT? Yes, of course, okay. yes. It was a very important, very interesting course, very good. So many of you have probably heard of uh, Kevin Lynch, right? Have you heard of Kevin Lynch? Ever go like, if you've heard of Kevin Lynch, you know, Kevin Lynch? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I can see that. Um, so Kevin Lynch is one of the most important writers about architecture and urbanism of the 20th century. Him and Jane Jacobs uh, are probably two of the most important writers. He taught a course at MIT and in 1963, he passed it on to his star student, uh, Julian Beinart, who then proceeded to teach it for another 36 years. And Manuel and I both taught that course, uh, took that course, I TA that course, and I co-taught co a seminar related to that course with Julian. And so I feel like in a way, this course is very much based on the inheritance from that course. And so there is a strong geneological connection 
to this course that was taught since the 1950s about the history and theory of cities and urbanism. And he just um, died, uh, he just died like a, mo a few months ago, two, two or three months ago, by the way. Yes, rest his soul. Julian Beinart just passed away. Yeah. Um, so, um, so in a way, it would be very easy for Manuel and I to just take the course the way Julian taught it, the way we experienced it, the way we learned it, and then pass it on to you with a few updates. But given the state of the world, given what uh, we were just talking about, I don't think so. I really don't think so. So just to convince you how important it is for us to not teach the course the way we were taught it, I'm gonna give you an example of how this course would be if we taught it the same way uh, we, we were taught it um, decades ago. So as I do this, I want you to pay attention to what happens to you, what happens in your body, what happens in your brain. Uh, uh, I, want, I, want to, I want you to pay attention to your breathing and your physiological uh, response to this type of teaching, right? Okay, you ready? We're starting now. Um, okay. First topic of the course, the city as a model of the cosmos. The Big Bang occurred 4.6 billion years ago, and it wasn't until about 200,000 years ago, a very, very brief second ago, if uh, you look at the, the history of time, uh, and, and it exploded. The emergence of Homo sapiens, the, our ancestors, emerged in the Great Rift Valley in Africa and spread from there. And at first went very slowly, spreading throughout Africa. And so for the first 100,000 years or more, humans were in Africa, nowhere else, and slowly spread into Europe and Asia through the South Pacific and only very recently arrived in uh, North and South America, in the Americas. And uh, to make sense of the complicated world, they developed myths and stories and uh, to make sense of the world. And these myths and stories grew into religions that became the beginning of the ordering logic of societies. And so we have the emergence of societies all over the world. And cities, we have to fast forward up to about 5,000 uh, BCE uh, with uh, the discovery of uh, ochre and uh, other raw materials uh, that allow uh, for specialization uh, and enough surplus production with the agricultural revolution. Blah, 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 right? You remember all this, right? We did this. You had this in history theory one. So what happened to your body when we started at the dawn of time? Are you... Did you relax a little bit? Did your breathing get a little even? Did you sit back in your chair a little bit? Right? So what's wrong with that? Why is that a problem? Well, once again, look at the world around you. Uh, what what is this course going to give you? What is the question we ask? What do you want to get out of this course? When you are at the peaks of your careers, 20, 30, 40 years from now, when you are at the peak of your earning capacity, of your line of promotions, when you become project architect, then you become principal, 
and then you form your own firm and the mayor's commission asks you to serve on the planning board or you run for mayor yourself or you become the minister of the interior of Ethiopia, uh, you know, when you start to take over the world, right? 30, 40 years from now, when your generation is taking over, what are you gonna need to know? What's gonna be happening in the world in the year 2070, in the year 2060, in the year 2050? The human population will be peaking at around 10 or 11 billion humans from its current state quickly approaching 8 billion, right? So what will be the state of the world? Sea levels will be rising either three feet or six feet or 16 feet. Cities will be uh, flooded and disappearing. Uh, the ability to feed uh, humanity will be challenged, social unrest. What's the point of learning about Chatao Huyot? I don't know if anyone's from Turkey. I've been trying to pronounce that properly for years. Chatao Huyot. Um, who cares, right? And so here's this music video that we're using to turn the corner. Can you hear this? Do you know this one? Sam's loving it. Had to get a job, but I can remember dissecting a frog. I wasn't taught how to pay tax. But I know loads about Shakespeare's classics. I was never taught how to vote. They devoted that time to defining isotopes. I wasn't taught how to look after my health. But mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Never spent a lesson on current events. Instead, I studied the old American West. I was never taught what laws there are. I was never taught what laws there are. Let me repeat, I was not taught the laws for the country I live in. But I know how Henry VIII killed his women. Divorced, beheaded, died. Divorced, beheaded, survived. Glad that's in my head instead of financial advice. I was shown the wavelengths of different hues of light. But I was never taught my human rights. Apparently, there's 30. Do you know them? I don't. Why the hell can't we both recite them by one time? No, it's metamorphic and sedimentary Yet I don't know squat about trading stocks or how money works at all. Where does it come from? How does the thing that motivates the world function? I thought to budget and disperse my earnings. I was too busy there rehearsing curse. It didn't learn how much it cost to raise a kid and what an affidavit is. But I spent days on what the quadratic equation is. F to B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2A. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. They made me learn that over basic first aid or how to recognize the most deadly mental disorders or diseases with preventable causes or how to buy a house with a mortgage if I could afford it because abstract maths was deemed more important than advice that would literally save thousands of lives but it's cool because now I can tell you if the number of unnecessary deaths caused by that choice was prime never taught present day practical medicines but I was told what the ancient Hippocratic method is I've got a headache the pain is ceaseless what should I take um maybe try some leeches could we discuss domestic and get the facts or how to help my depressed friend with a mental state? Um, no. But learn mental maths because you won't have a calculator with you every day. They say it's not the kids, the parents are the problem. Then if you taught the kids to parent, that's the problem solved then. All this advice about using a condom, but not for when you actually have a kid when you want one. I'm only fluent in this language. For serious, the rest of the world speaks too. Do you think I'm an idiot? He chose the soul over the political system, so like a typical citizen, now I don't know what I'm voting on. Which policies exist or how to make them change me? We should pull and put the process. So at 18, I was expected to elect a representative from a system I had never, ever, ever been presented with. But I won't take it. I'll tell everyone my childhood was wasted. I'll share it everywhere how I was educated and insist these pointless things don't stay in school. <clears throat> so there's some ideas for what one could get out of your education 
Um, so we're architects and we're looking at cities. Why would we do that? Uh, we learned in the last summer how buildings mean, uh, remember all that? And now we're, we're gonna look at how cities mean and how to draw cities, how to analyze cities to learn from them. So what can be learned from cities that might help us in everyday life? And by us, I mean you, um, 30, 40, 50 years from now, you're gonna be facing challenges. Imagine that you're in control uh, and some of you will be in control. All of you will have uh, positions of great responsibility if you're like every other generation of Wentworth alum, you will have responsibilities. People will look to you to solve problems. It won't be based on your deep knowledge of Jatal Huyuk in Turkey. It will be based on your ability to look out the window, to look out the windshield of your car, if there is such a thing anymore, uh, to understand the world in an authentic, dependable way so that you understand the forces that are operating in the world and then what to do. So there are a lot of things going on now and uh, I'm looking for that slide. There we go. So there's a lot going on in the world today. And by today, I mean today. Manuel, there's your American flag. Exactly, the model I had. I had, <laughs> I had the little model that I, I got. When I got, <laughs> when I did the, the, the naturalization, when I got, my, I got my passport in the US uh, like uh, three years ago, so I wanted to emphasize I, uh, the moment we are living today. We, this is a great picture, and this shows something that is very important for us, for architects and for the people in general, which is the lack, or better, better to say, the, the gain of freedom, the gain of democracy, the right to freedom and the right to democracy. And I want to put this in the context because by not by coincidence, probably by complementary complementarity, we are living today the, the, the taking the position of the 46th president of the United States. 46, I think it is. The number is 46. And happened to be a, a simple man, uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, have, have worked, a man that has worked for a long time in Congress and in politics in the, in the country. Uh, the, most, the, 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 the most natural, simple man, old man, the, by the way, where we are all going to be. So he's an old man uh, that with his wisdom and his uh, in favor of the, of, the, of the production of a life in the, in the, in the cities and in the life in the country trying to defend democracy. And why this is so important? I, I, Robert is telling us in the, in the first part of the lecture, he's telling us about what we have to learn from the city, what we have to learn from the other people that surround us, and what we have to learn from, the, from you, from your own co uh, colleagues in the class. Okay, this is something that is inherited in the roots of this town, of this, of this population is the gain, the right to democracy, the right to freedom. And you know that policy, politics is a, politics is the life that we live because we live in cities and not by any, it's not a coincidence, it's just a, a fact that policy, policy comes from police and police is the name of cities in Greek. You have the, all the names that come from police. Police, for example, the police is the way to control 
the police to is a way to have some over uh, control over the police as well also you have civilization all the all the issues related with civilization come from the city all the civil civil engineering for example is the, is the engineers that deal with the civic and the civic is the, the, the people who deal with the city. So in other words, what we're doing here is very much embedded into a situation that we live every day in the, in the cities. And this city they has its symbols and the symbols represent democracy, represent freedom, represent a, pos a position in life independently of the ideology, uh, depend, independently of the fact that we must think different, which I think is even much better if a city, if the people in the same city think different and live different. We are talking about something that is inherited in our blood, which is the fact that democracy is sacred. And the sacred of democracy means that a man, a simple man, like today, Joe Biden can be named president of the United States for the next four years, and he has the right to do it. He has the, and that has happened for the last 200 and 205 years or 210 years. And that it was almost ready to be broken and didn't, was, was not broken. So I, in, in order to, to illustrate this and to tell you this is real, I come from a country where 30, something like 30 years ago, a military, a small, I mean, range military took the arms of the country and made a coup and, and turned down democracy that had like 40 to 50 years old. And that decision made by this military who no, nobody authorized to do that, he was in jail because actually the coup was bad, was not well done. And he, did, he killed a lot, his attempt to take the power killed more than 100 people. And at the same time, he was in Yale and he was pardoned. He was, he was completely um, uh, given, given freedom from Yale for the next, because of the next president of the country wanted to come to be, uh, to be uh, happy with the people that think different than him. And he was, he was in some ways uh, having the contradiction because this, this, school, this school leader should have been in jail for the rest of his life. And he, at the third year, he was not only out of the jail, but he was in campaign, making a campaign to be the president of the country. And he won the presidency of the country in a, in a correct elections. In the, I'm talking about 2000, no, one, one, uh, 19, 1998. In 99, he was the president of the United States of the of the country in Venezuela, and he he stayed until he died. And then the next person who he decided who would be came next. And Venezuela has been 22 years of a dictatorship, who decides what the people should eat, should work, should think, what the people should do. And if you disagree completely with the government. You just lost, you, you lose your freedom and you, go, you can go to jail. Or people like, uh, like us in, you know, in this country cannot go back to our country, if, even if we want to work there, because there is a risk that we could get, just for thinking, we could get completely out of the, of the loop. So I have friends who are in, the, in being, being in prison, who has lost their, their, their liberty, who have also uh, attempt to leave the country and haven't been able to do it. Some others, like me itself, and others are uh, separated from their own family, and, and at the same time we are fighting for for the future in Venezuela, <clears throat> like Robert said, because you are you are the generation that is going to take over, and we want to leave something <clears throat> for you that is better that. Uh, the thing that we got in the past. So I, I, I'm just mentioning this because the fragility of freedom and the fragility of democracy is something that we have to respect and we have to worship. And we hope that this today represents the beginning of a new democracy for the United States where freedom, environment, and other issues are the cities itself and life 
life uh, in common can be taken more into account and can become the goal of the society. Thank you. So, um, so uh, we're hoping to make this course, uh, we're hoping to design this course, to redesign this course in order to respond to real-time feedback real time, uh, the urgency of now, the big now of the recent past and your future careers. So it's a thickening of the present moment. The time scale of this course is right now, but it includes your careers, the timeline of your careers. Imagine yourself 30, 40 years from now, uh, facing uh, unprecedented crises, almost unprecedented crises that have never been faced before in human history. And uh, how are you going to know what to do? When the moment comes, how are you going to know what to do? Uh, history may or may not have lessons for that future version of yourself. So what the most important thing, so one of the most important things is what does history teach us? But an even more important thing is what are the skills necessary to make sense of a chaotic world? So now this is where uh, the main activity of this course is going to be for you to make sense of the world, to develop your skills uh, the, of making sense. So if this is what the world looks like right now, how do you make sense of this world? What is going on here in this picture? Uh, who are these people? What are these flags? What is this architecture? What is this dome? What is, uh, what is the rusticated, uh, form that allows these protests, these rioters to scale the walls. Um, all of these questions are posed by this photo. This is not just a dead photo. This is a platform for figuring out uh, specifically the core question of the course, which is how do... Okay, let me reset my slideshow and get to the right slide. So um, how do architects draw cities? And how, how have architects drawn cities in the past? And how should we draw cities uh, in our careers, in your careers, in order to uh, discover meanings, uh, opportunities, in order to understand the forces that are operating in the world around us. Um, so um, I think now would be a good time to have everyone uh, maybe looking at, looking at the, where is my, looking at this photo mm -hmm. and anticipating what the challenges are that you are facing in your careers, I think now would be a good moment to pause and allow you each to ask your question. Um, ask a question that represents uh, something that you need an answer for. What do you need to know in the next three months? And you should start off by being a little angry, a little pissed off is the appropriate attitude. Mm -hmm. You are sacrificing um, 80 hours of class time, more or less, uh, about twice that in work you're doing at home. So let's just round it off. Let's say about 200 hours of, of the next three months are gonna be devoted to this course. That should piss you off. Who's pissed off? I'm a little pissed off for you, right? So uh, what am I, hey, 
hey, what am I gonna get? How much tuition is going into this course? 80, you know, 200 hours, tens of thousands of dollars. What am I going to get for it, right? So if you're not, a, if you're not a little angry, you're not paying attention. So from that place of uh, concern, let's call it. What's your question? What do you need an answer to? Please write it into the chat to everyone. And uh, the first person who the first people who ask their questions have the easy job because you don't have to worry about repeating something that's already been asked. It's the people who go down at the bottom who delay. We're going to have to make sure they're not asking the exact same question that someone else asked. Okay, we want um, we want forty six original questions. <clears throat> Thank you, Shay. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Katrell. Thank you, Oz. Hao Xuan. Alex. Lily. Is it okay to mention social justice issues? That social justice has nothing to do with architecture, right? I taunt you. Can social justice be something that is addressed through the form and operation of cities? Okay, these are excellent questions. Don't be afraid to ask harder questions that uh, Manuel and I might be terrified of.
Okay. So given these questions, how should we spend our time? Well, what Manuel and I propose is that we not eliminate the lecture entirely. Uh, we don't turn it over to you because there still is an expectation that he and I add some value to the course ourselves. We should, we may be only number four, but even at position number four, uh, it's still a great deal of responsibility, a great deal of trust, and uh, we should earn our living uh, honorably and bring everything we can bring to this course, uh, which means um, without for a second implying that it is enough for you to know everything we know. It's not enough. It is, not, it is no longer okay for the best students in this course to be almost as good as the teacher. That didn't work out so well in the 20th century. Your job is not to replicate the knowledge of the instructors. Your job is to use us to catapult yourselves way beyond where we're at. Nothing would make us happier than for you to take over the class and to be leaders. You're gonna be leaders uh, when we're in the retirement home, sitting on the porch together. Years from now, Manuel and I will be in our rocking chairs with blankets on our laps saying, oh, it's so, let's play, let's put together another jigsaw puzzle. And in the meantime, you're gonna be facing the, the crises of the planet. Nothing would make us happier than to read the newsfeed and find out that uh, you have testified before the United Nations on what uh, the measures need to be taken to safeguard our cities from uh, sea level rise. That's what we wanna see. And we don't wanna wait that long. We don't have that much time. We wanna see you do that in the next 10 years after you graduate. Wait a minute, that's too long from now. We wanna see it in studio when you show up in the concentration studio next fall. Wait, we can't wait that long. We wanna see it in this class. We wanna see you taking on leadership roles in this class. This is no longer, education is no longer about you getting as close as you can get to the expertise of the teachers. So whatever it is I'm about to show you in this slideshow, it's not good enough, okay? You're not trying to do as good as this. You're trying to do better. Speaking of which, um, I need to get Manuel back into the lecture. Okay, I think we got him. Okay, so on with the slides. How do cities, we, we, talked, we talked last summer about how buildings mean. Uh, the different ways that buildings do what they do, the different ways that buildings mean what they mean and have the impact they have on society. So uh, if you don't remember uh, what we talked about, hopefully it's in your notes. This course is about how cities mean what they mean. And here's a hint. Architecture means what it means because it does what it does. This is the Forrest Gump version of architecture. Architecture is as architecture does. It means what it means because it does what it does. Uh, cities are the same way. What is going on here?
This image is overflowing with demonstrations of power, wealth, inclusion, exclusion, corruption, the role of architects. This image it is the teacher. This piece of the city is the teacher. This is an example of number one. What's the most important source of understanding in the world? It is the world itself. Here is the world itself teaching us with tons and tons of things to teach us. Manuel, are you here? I'm going to try again to get him in. Look he's here. He's on mute. Oh, he's on mute. Okay, thank you. So just think about what this image has to teach us. Sorry, now, not, hmm. welcome back. Thank you. Thanks. So no, it's truly, it's truly something that is, is something that you can see in many places, and, and it's frankly it's something difficult to believe that this exists. This situation exists for the comfort of both. Or the discomfort of both. How can this happen? Is is in the inequality that you can see here. So this is an example of the kind of uh, image that we want you to work with this semester. Every week, we want you to find an image that has something to teach us. And then we want you to analyze it. Remember that last summer? Remember the analysis assignment? We're gonna do some more of that, but this time, instead of drawing with a pencil and tracing, we're gonna start with a high resolution image so you can zoom in. And we are gonna use uh, Adobe Creative Suite, primarily Photoshop, if you're like other students. And we are going to analyze these images as a, as a means of learning what the world has to, has to teach us. So the world itself is number one, is the number one source of understanding. The tools and methods of architecture the tools of analysis, the tools of architectural analysis that you will be practicing every week, that is the secret, that's the superpower to uh, identify, to explore, to identify, to discover how architecture does what it does in the urban setting. And another superpower, another method of architecture is writing. You are going to continue to do what you did last summer, you are going to write one minute paragraphs that translate the discoveries you draw out of the image analysis into words. And that assignment um, will be issued on Friday. And the first, your first, uh, your first assignment is due next Wednesday. So we're looking for these types of images. And the working hypothesis of the course might be true, might be not. It's up to you to improve it. And by the way, this is the result of having taught this course something like 15 times. So it didn't start out this way. Where we started out is uh, looking at things like this, the Google Earth and digital models. Um, this is too abstract. Um, this doesn't really help. Uh, this is too dark. Uh, this isn't clear enough. Uh, there are a lot of things um, that we found unsatisfying about the way we've taught this course in the past. Um, these slides are a little bit out of order. I'm going to do this. So um, when Manuel and I uh, took this course at MIT, uh, we looked at how architects draw cities. Remember this? Remember the exercise you guys did last year, last summer? Um, there's a long tradition of architects drawing cities, and there are some really important lessons to be drawn from the tradition of architects drawing cities. This is the 
1746 uh, Noli map of Rome, uh, which is uh, a revolutionary way of looking at cities that we strongly recommend uh, you incorporate. Uh, this is a diagram. You've been trained uh, all through your undergraduate education uh, to draw diagrams as a way of asserting something. Diagrams are very useful, uh, quick ways to communicate ideas. We are not drawing diagrams. We are analyzing. Diagrams are one thing, analysis is a whole nother thing. We are looking at the raw data of cities and uh, the meanings and forces emerge out of it and move in the direction of a diagram without ever going to a diagram. Um, this is a plan. It's also an assertion of how uh, the architects want to build the city. It ignores the hills. It ignores the reality of the topography of the city of San Francisco. And there are problems. When you ignore the reality of a place, it can cause problems. Uh, this diagram uh, by Le Corbusier is something we'll be talking about. But these are the types of drawings that we used to engage. This is Broadacre City, uh, a model by Frank Lloyd Wright. Here's Kevin Lynch, uh, you've heard of him. Uh, this is his mental map of Boston um, that we'll talk about. This is a transect. All of these are abstractions. These are assertions, these are diagrams. These are the types of things that architects assert and get built in the world, uh, but they're not as valuable uh, in terms of learning from the world. Architecture has a long tradition of white male arrogance uh, where we know better than anybody else. We are geniuses, our schools create genius. If we weren't brilliant, we would have gotten kicked out of school uh, in sophomore year because that's the way school used to be. Schools, architecture schools were gateway keepers uh, where uh, if you were not a genius and it helps if you're a white male, uh, you get kicked out. Um, we're doing the opposite of that. Uh, this is an analytical, this is data uh, about movements in cities. And this is uh, uh, Weldon Priest. Weldon Priest taught for decades in the architecture program at uh, Wentworth. He also uh, took the same courses Manuel and I did at MIT. And he did better than anyone I've ever seen at drawing cities in an architectural manner. And he starts with the reality of the place itself. This is not a diagram. This is a very precise a uh, drawing that captures the full reality of the place, but he is using darkness to draw our attention to specific things. And where it's not as important, he's pushing it into the background. He's withholding- Hey, Robert, see, see one, one thing important. See that he departs from the street. The street is like the, the, the original essence of the, and from the street, everything is a variation of that. Yeah, he, his, this exercise is, uh, he called the street study. So basically right. he right. takes a street and he treats the street as if it's a building. And so the space of the street is the, is the architectural space of the interior it's where humans occupy space, where meaning is produced by, produ by framing all human experience. So he cuts a section, and by he, I mean his students. I co-taught the course with him here. So um, this is the work by three students who did an analysis of uh, the historic center of Copenhagen, Copenhagen, and so, the street is treated as if it's a, a building and the section cuts through the space of the street, which cuts through the center of a building and goes back into the street as if 
there is no difference between interior and exterior. This is blowing out of the same sheet. Uh, this, uh, and so you see um, figure ground, uh, roof plans uh, that show the shadows. Uh, you see perspectives. You see uh, figure ground over time on the lower, lower left. Um, and you see especially these aerial perspectives like on the lower, slightly elevated aerial perspectives. Um, quite remarkable ways of drawing cities. Uh, in the early years of the class, we used Google Earth. Google Earth was at one point a new thing. Um, and so we used Google Earth to generate uh, views of cities. But there's something horribly wrong about looking at cities from straight overhead that we learned, the this, this students who took this course in previous years, we learned that when you are this far away from the city, you have no access to the uh, human scale, uh, the architectural scale human experience of the space. This is interesting, but it lends itself to diagrammatic interpretation that distances us from the actual experience of space. We used to also start with the city as cosmos uh, and move forward in time. Hey, hey. But uh, there's an urgency to the conditions of the city now uh, that requires us to do things differently. We need access to the human experience in the foreground at the architectural scale in relationship to the city in the background. We need to understand how the human body moves through space and how the human body experiences that space in relationship to other things. And so um, these examples are a few of the best examples from last year. Uh, there are things wrong with these examples. These are not perfect. Uh, the best examples from last year, we're putting them forward here as the minimum standard for what you do this semester in your analysis work. Uh, we need people and architectural scale human experience in the foreground in relationship to uh, the larger forces of the city in the background. So there are things wrong with, uh, with each of these. This is starting to get it right a little bit better, uh, where there's a foreground that we can imagine occupying. It's even better when there are actual human beings occupying the foreground. And so we see uh, the human experience at the architectural scale in the foreground in relationship to the patterns of urban infrastructures uh, so that we can read the forces, we can read the relationship between the architectural experience in the foreground and the larger patterns of the city in the background, so that we can understand what these relationships are all about. How does it work? And it typically, we need to have an elevated aerial perspective to put that Humans, uh, human experience at the architectural scale in the foreground. This has the architectural scale human experience in the foreground, but we don't see enough of the larger pattern. This is slightly better because it's slightly higher. And we use highlighting in subtle overlays of color to bring forth meaning in the analysis so that we can talk about each of these elements one at a time. Google Earth is becoming better and better at allowing us to choose the, the view. And it was only last year, last spring, that one of our students, Kira Tyler, pointed out that uh, you could do this in Google Earth. You can move the point of view and actually get a reasonable view of 
uh, the place. Typically, aerial photos work better. And so you'll see working from frame to frame, this student is highlighting certain things as they point them out in the one minute paragraph. So that uh, part by part, it gets explained. Here's the same part of Mexico City. And so uh, by changing these very subtle highlight spaces and presenting it as a video, we can actually uh, perform a one minute analysis. This is what we expect of you every Wednesday uh, in the analysis assignment, that you will choose an image, you will analyze it in stages, you will save each stage, you will translate your findings into a paragraph of text with a claim, an argument, and then a takeaway question or a, a provocative question at the end. And you guys are experts at this by now. And we want you to make a, a one minute video. We'll, we'll see a few. Um, Anybody has a question about the about the procedure, the method? Yeah, any questions about that assignment? We'll we'll be going over it again on on Wednesday. I mean on Friday. Friday, okay. And you will have one due on Wednesday. Any questions? Will you guys be giving an assignment sheet or can we find this somewhere so we don't have to like remember? Uh, you will be getting an assignment sheet. These slides are available in Brightspace. And uh, uh, so you can look back at these slides uh, and you, you'll you have access to the assignment sheet. We're gonna finalize it this afternoon. So, it'll, and we can talk about it on Friday. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Um, now on Wednesday, what are we gonna do? On Wednesday, uh, well, last year, here's what we did on Wednesday. We, uh, we held a forum and we said, um, Given the evidence that you all analyzed, what action steps should we take in the world today? So uh, the premise of this course is that history has things to teach us that we can put into practice. We can use as the basis for designing interventions in today's world. And by today, I mean in the long present tense of your careers. So anticipating the problems that each of us face in the next several decades, what do these examples from the past, what do they have to offer us in the future? What do, how can we design interventions in the future? And so we show up on, to class on Wednesday and we show up with the evidence and we present the evidence to each other and the evidence helps us. So the sound is not working that great. So, so this is Atlanta. Um, and so students present their one minute videos and um, the one minute videos reveal uh, lessons that help us understand uh, how cities work, what are the forces that are operating in the city. And based on those, um, based on those presentations, uh, what actions need to be taken. And so, this group uh, is presenting a set of action steps based on uh, 
what they learned in their analysis. They're presenting evidence. They're starting with the evidence. They're analyzing the evidence and then they are proposing steps to be taken. And these are steps to be taken with regards to uh, automobile dependence. And these same students went on to uh, work together on these topics in the fall studio. So the topics that we looked at, the topics that the students uh, identified and developed, these action steps were brought forward from the spring concentration studies curriculum into this, the fall senior concentration studies studio. And currently Manuel is teaching an extension of last fall studio. Uh, we were looking at Caracas, Venezuela, one of the most, uh, one of the clearest demonstrations of the kinds of challenges that you will be facing during your lifetimes. The city of Caracas has collapsed uh, for all intents and purposes. And people like Manuel and Ignacio and our colleagues in Venezuela and throughout Latin America are developing proposals to help rebuild society by rebuilding the architecture and urban form of the city. Manuel, this is your mm. cue. Okay. Well, it's good that you mentioned that. We are going to talk more about that on, on Friday. I just wanted to ask also, it is very important that you learn this process together. The, the, the fact that you're going to be, be converted into groups and the groups are going to discuss ideas and, and have the opportunity through the discussion to learn and to formulate ideas that can be the solution of the problem for the future. And, but that is not going to come from your individuals, but as a group. And that group vision is going to be the key for that learning that is going to be part of your process. So questions about the course. <clears throat> so um, the way it's structured is on Fridays, we will be introducing a topic. Um, and uh, we used to start with uh, the first cities, Chata Al Huyuk, but it's difficult to make a connection between your careers, the challenges you are going to face in your lifetimes, and Jat Al Huyo, right? That's a challenge. So instead, this Friday, we're going to look at uh, the year 2050, the year 2060, the year 2070. What are the challenges that we already know that you are going to face? In, during your careers. We know some things about um, what you're gonna face. We don't have very many ideas about how you're gonna face it, but we do have a sense of the seriousness of the challenge and what are some of the crises because we're seeing them unfold already. And so the writing is on the wall. We can anticipate uh, the shit storm that is coming down on your heads. Sorry about that. But in the last few moments of any relevance of, my, of our generation, we're gonna do what we can to uh, boost your ability to face these things with courage, creativity, and skill. That's not gonna be enough, but it's the best we can do. So that's, so instead of starting with Chata Al Hoyo, we're gonna start with the challenges of the 21st century. And we're going to focus on the Anthropocene. And if you haven't heard of the term Anthropocene, well, then you weren't paying attention to the final lecture of last summer. Um, but basically, we're going to look, we're going to start at the end of the story, which is your careers. And we're going to identify the questions. We're going to do another thing in the chat where maybe, and we'll use Brightspace, but we're going to collect 
the urgent questions and challenges that you need to understand in order to face your careers as the Anthropocene unfolds, as many of the systems that we have depended on uh, start to collapse. Uh, because we've learned, if nothing else, we've learned that you can't depend on these systems to hold up under the forces that they're experiencing. And not to be second on the list, maybe top of the list, these systems are themselves the problem. The reason these problems exist is because they are baked into the system itself. The system is not the solution. The system is the problem. We have to open our eyes and see things that have been invisible to my generation and for the last several decades and centuries. These forces that are embedded in the system that we take for granted are the forces of extractive capitalism. They are oppressive, they are racist, they are misogynist, and if until you can see those forces at work, all we can expect is the reproduction of those systems. And friends don't let friends reproduce systems of oppression. We're here for each other. Um, we're not gonna let that happen. So what we need to do is to sharpen our tools so that we can see the things that no one sees. And it's up to you, we're counting on you to show us the things that no one sees. And based on that revelation, figure out what we're gonna do about it. So we're gonna give a lecture on Friday. We're gonna present the problems that we can already see coming up uh, to hit us in the face and uh, to try to give you the tools, whatever tools we can give you for you to see the problems and the root causes of those problems. Then uh, we're gonna need you to ask questions and identify the issues, the forces, the, the topics that you need to understand uh, because uh, there are more questions than there are answers and we need better questions. So the output of the lecture is not your notes. That's only, that's a minor part. The main output of the lecture are your questions, the urgency of your questions. What do you need to know in order to uh, contribute to addressing these problems? Out of those questions, we're asking you to perform your analysis, uh, to produce your videos and to show up on Wednesday with your analysis videos uh, uploaded to uh, a Google slideshow so that we can share it with each other, group you in logical groups, and that you working together in the breakout rooms can work out some action steps and some more questions. So the output of every class meeting are urgent questions to be taken up by the next class meeting. So the urgent questions that come out of Wednesday's session next week, a week from today, will be used, will be challenges to Manuel and myself to present a lecture that somehow touches as much as possible on the urgency of your questions. And we're gonna go back in time, starting with the Anthropocene, starting in the future, we're gonna go back in time to uh, cities right now today. Where are cities facing crises? Where are cities solving problems? And from there, we're gonna go back in time uh, to the emergence of informal settlements. And from there, we're gonna go back in time uh, and step back. We may or may not make it to Chatal Hoyok, but um, you already studied that in history theory one. So um, our job is done in terms of that. But our job is only beginning in terms of getting you ready to face these problems with courage and resourcefulness and leadership. Manuel. 
I, 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 frankly, I, I, I don't think I have anything new to add now. I would, uh, I would try to read. I would read the the questions that you have in the chat, and I would like to, I would like to bring some topics for the discussion next time. Okay, your turn, everyone. We only have five minutes. We need your questions, your comments. Uh, there are some even, even logistical questions. Um, how are we gonna all get on WhatsApp? Thank you um, for setting that up. Uh, why are we using Brightspace and not Blackboard? Why are there two? Uh, learning management systems. Um, Do you get any tutorials about, about Brightspace or any, any type of meetings for the students or they have to find it out themselves? I, we're assuming that unlike us, they just click on it and off they go. They don't have any. Okay. Uh, this, Emmanuel, we're the last generation where we don't click on anything until we've been through a training, uh, <laughs> three week training course, and we get a certificate. Then and only then do we click on anything. They, uh, that, they that just click. That maybe your generation, my generation used to read a catalog or something. Yeah. If we could give them a catalog, but they wouldn't read it. They would just click on every possible yeah. button they can click on Right. until they make it do what they want it to do. Exactly. So let, 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 them, let them do what they need to do with the, with the Bright Space program. Yeah. I could be wrong. Is there any, does anyone have a question about Bright Space? Um, I have a question. Um, Hey, Wentworth, what's going on? Who's got that question? Who's a little pissed off? Me, I found out like the day, we got an email from like one of my other professors and then my friend was like, hey, just so you know, a lot of people are transitioning to Brightspace and that was the first time I ever logged on to it. I had no idea about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then like half of my classes are on Brightspace and then the other half are on Blackboard. It's really weird. And how many of your classes are using Nuvu? Uh, I think probably just Studio will be using Nuvu. So, and how many of you are using uh, Concept Board? Probably just Studio again. Crazy, right? Why can't we just use one tool? Who's with me? Okay, it was a trick question. If we only use one tool, it would be the one tool, uh, it would probably be Excel spreadsheet. And so all your courses would be taught using Excel spreadsheet because there's always one professor who says, I'm not comfortable using anything but Excel spreadsheet. And that's the tool we would use because they have power. So be careful what you wish for. I'm grateful we're not using Blackboard anymore. Blackboard was um, a train wreck. No, in terms of like, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, please. I was gonna say in terms of like Blackboard and Brightspace, like we could have like migrated better to like one um, software, but like some classes are on Blackboard and then some classes are on Brightspace. So, and you know, before kind of like th there was no announcement so that we could know that it was kind of like yeah figure it out <laughs> well here's the thing um we're counting on the fact that you guys are flexible thank you very much also wentworth basically did exactly what you're saying wentworth said <clears throat> okay starting september in 2020 blackboard is going into the landfill and everybody's going to use brightspace and then the faculty said, no, no, wait a minute, please don't take away my Blackboard. And so Wentworth responded and said, okay, January, 2021, Blackboard is going into the landfill and everyone's gonna use Brightspace. 
The architecture program, the only program at Wentworth said, wait a minute, we want to use Nuvu and Nuvu can't, is not ready to be linked to Brightspace. So it's only the studio courses at Wentworth that are still you uh, uh, of architecture that are still using Blackboard. So, um, so it's it's the studio faculty's fault, including Manuel and myself. Um, even though I hate Nuvu, uh, I'm using it mm. because people are are requiring us to use it. Um, mm. So here we are. But um, I promise you that Brightspace is the last new tool you will ever have to learn until the day you die, because there couldn't possibly be any new applications that will come out, right? We have them all, we're done. Just no new applications, please, right? Well, wait a minute. I kind of like, I kind of like the new add-ons to Rhino. Okay, just that new one. But that's it, no new, the, the story here is that there will never be a whole month going by in your careers when you won't be asked to embrace a new tool, right? So get used to it. We may be introducing new tools here, but probably not. Have you used Google Slides before? Who has not used Google Slides before? Okay, those of you who haven't used Google Slides before, uh, they're going to be your new tool because we're going to use it a lot in this course. Other questions? Infrastructure, logistics, um, questions that you might think are silly. This is your course and your time. Oh, look, time's up. Any last questions? Uh, Manuel and I will hang out um, for a few minutes to see if anyone wants to talk about anything. Uh, in the meantime, thank you everyone. See you on Friday. Thank you very much. This is gonna be fun. See you Friday, you. see you all Friday. Have a, have a, yeah, I have a good night. Thank you. Okay, let's, uh, okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, so for next Wednesday, we're going to be doing chapter one, right? Um, 